As previously reported on this channel, on Sunday the 4th of September, a Friday Harbor seaplane tour DHC-3 Turban Otter went down off the shoreline near Whidbey Island in Washington. According to eyewitnesses and preliminary ADSB data, the aircraft was flying straight and level cruise flight at about 800 feet above the water, and the aircraft climbed slightly and then nose dived straight, nearly straight into the water, killing all 10 people on board. On the 4th of October, an emergency airworthiness directive was issued regarding the tail structure of all turbine DHC-3 aircraft. Let's check it out. Here's the Emergency Airworthiness Directive 2022-21-51, dated 4 October. This AD has been sent to the owners and operators of Viking Air Limited model DHC-3 airplanes. Viking Air holds the STC for many of the turbine-converted otters that are out in the field today. This emergency AD was prompted by multiple recent reports of cracks in the left-hand elevator auxiliary spar. And that's how these emergency ADs come about, not only just from the accident, even though they, they haven't determined the cause of the accident yet. Once this accident happened, everybody started checking the tails on their otters, and they found many people reported cracks in the tail, and the, especially in this rear auxiliary spar portion of the tail. More on that in a minute. They got that information into the FAA and the FAA was able to quickly administer this emergency airworthiness directive. This is not the first time that problems in this part of the tail of the otter have been reported. There were two other incidents, one back in 1992 and one back in 2014 regarding the servo tabs on the elevator of the otter. So in order to comply with this inspection within 10 hours time and service or three days after receipt of this emergency AD, whichever occurs first, unless already done within the last 90 days and thereafter at intervals not to exceed 110 hours time and service, you got to remove the left hand elevator tab. This is a servo tab from the elevator and perform a detailed visual inspection of the entire left hand elevator auxiliary spar for cracks, corrosion, and previous repairs. For the purposes of this AD, structural reinforcements are not considered previous repairs. If any crack corrosion beyond level one or previous repair is found during an, any inspection required by this emergency AD, before further flight, replace the left hand elevator auxiliary spar. The DHC-3 Otter was built in the 1960s by de Havilland and was a bigger version of the very popular de Havilland Beaver Bush aircraft. The Otter was originally powered by the Pratt & Whitney 1340 radial engine and most Otters today have since been modified to be powered by a turboprop engine. One of the basic design considerations from the start was to build the tail as what's known as a cruciform tail or get the tail mounted up relatively high to keep it out of the way of rocks and debris when you're landing and operating off of bush strips in the dirt and or water and spray when you're operating in floats. One of the problems with this design is that tail is up very high and it makes it very hard to pre-flight this tail on your typical morning daily pre-flight inspection. In order to properly inspect this tall tail, especially as a float plane, you need to pull the you, got, you need to basically spin the aircraft around on the, on the dock there, get the tail over the dock or over some pavement, climb up on a ladder and inspect the tail. So as a result, these tails do not get inspected very often on each pre-flight, at least at the top of the tail. And I'll show you why that's important. Here's an example of just how high that tail is off the water. The tail of the otter consists of a fixed horizontal stabilizer, which is trimmable, a conventional elevator, and two servo tabs mounted on the rear of the elevator. The elevator is operated conventionally with the control wheel, the control stick, and is assisted by the two servo tabs mounted on the trailing edge of the elevator. The servo tabs provide basically aerodynamic power steering to assist you in raising and lowering the elevator of this relatively large aircraft. The aircraft is trimmed via a movable horizontal stabilizer. So the two servo tabs mounted 
on the rear of the elevator do not necessarily trim the aircraft. Now, why is this AD concerned so much with the left servo tab on the left elevator versus the right one? The servo tab on the left elevator is the one that is interconnected to the flaps of the otter. So as you raise and lower the flaps, that does move slightly this servo tab on the left side of the elevator of the otter to minimize the amount of pitch change that you get when you normally raise and lower the flaps. The otter is trimmed by moving a hand crank near the pilot's seat, which in turn turns a series of bell cranks, pulleys, cables, and push rods to the movable horizontal stabilizer. So the entire stabilizer moves up and down to provide the pitch trim for the otter. Originally, when the Otter just had the radial engine, the right servo tab, original design, only had one rod moving the servo tab. Because of the increase in weight and performance and speed of the turboprop converted Otters, most servo tabs on the right-hand side of the elevator have been modified to have two rods supporting the servo, servo tab. Again, these servo tabs are a mechanical linkage and move generally opposite direction of the control sur surface to lighten the control feel for the pilots to provide that aerodynamic power steering, if you will, for this relatively large aircraft. Because otherwise the elevator control is just a straight mechanical pull on the pilot's yoke. On the left hand servo, servo tab, the one that's interconnected with the flaps, there's only one rod, but there has been since added a balance weight to the servo tab to make it a balanced servo tab to minimize the chance of flutter. So what this AD is saying is you need to remove this left servo tab and inspect the spar back here, the auxiliary spar to the left elevator over here. So if you pull the left tab, you see it's a piano hinged from the top. This elevator is flipped upside down and you need to inspect this channel, this simple aluminum channel, which is the, the rear spar to the elevator, the auxiliary spar to the elevator, if you will, to which the tab mounts to. And you can see also these rivets. They've got special rivets called out. They're blind rivets or structural blind rivets that attach the skin and on the top surface, the skin and the hinge and the spar, they fasten them all together. One of the problems is you can have multiple repairs out here and eventually hog out these holes to the point where the rivets can no longer properly fill those holes. You gotta keep increasing the size of the rivets and in turn weakening the overall structure. But right in here is where they're finding a lot of cracks and corrosion in this structure. And this is the structure that's very hard to pre-flight because of the height of the tail. Now here's an example from 2015 where an otter with only on the right servo tab with only the single control rod, the single control rod failed here at the attach point for the servo tab and the servo tab fluttered and cracked and began to destroy itself, but the pilot was able to get the aircraft back on the ground safely. And here's an example of too many repairs, too many times hogging out the holes and replacing the rivets the rivets begin smoking there as an indication that they're loose and eventually the structure fails. So what is aerodynamic flutter? Well, that's what happened here to the Tacoma Narrows Bridge famous video we all had to watch in science. It's the dynamic instability of an elastic structure in a fluid flow caused by positive feedback between the body's deflection of the force ex exerted by the fluid flow. You got that? In aircraft, this can lead to disastrous results very quickly and is a result of, well, it's basically caused by a lack of stiffness in the control in the uh, flying surface. Wing flutter. These are model aircraft. If you've messed around with model aircraft long enough, you've probably built a design that experienced flutter and it can lead to complete loss of, and sudden loss of the airframe. What was that P-51 Miss Ashley in the Reno National Championship Air Races many, many years ago? And each individual flying surface can be subject 
to flutter. Wind tunnel testing. <laughs> the old 141. Yeah, remember the T-tail of the 141 had that problem. So all flying surfaces need to be designed to minimize or prevent aerodynamic flutter. So while investigators have recovered much of the wreckage of 725 Tango Hotel, it's going to be critical to find as much of the tail as they possibly can to help determine if, in fact, this was the cause of this accident. Meanwhile, investigators need to rule out everything else before they narrow it down to the tail of Tango Hotel. Thanks so much for your support, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you there.